Hey guys, in this part of the series I'm going to be talking about uh, making a lithium ion battery protection circuit for our battery pack that I've been working on here. Now, this is based around a little AT8085 or AT8045 microcontroller. Um, and you've got a few parts on this over here. We have a voltage regulator. Uh, and a couple of uh, capacitors for that. Um, over here we have a MOSFET and there's a couple of transistors in here that actually uh, uh, end up taking the 5 volt output from our microcontroller and bumping it up to the 12 volts that our battery has in order to uh, feed that into the FET. Yeah, a couple of indicator LEDs and a switch. Now, so first off, with this, I'm going to show you uh, a demonstration of how it works, and then I'll take a look. I'll show you the uh, the schematic, and then we'll go take a look at the code. So let's get started. All right. So as far as this test goes, I'm just going to show you what these two little indicator lights do because it's fairly easy to see uh, how that works. I'm not going to hook up anything to the MOSFET because this just isn't really capable of pushing that much current, but I have tested it with the MOSFET and the actual battery pack and it works just fine. Um, but as far as this goes, I've got a 19 volt power supply coming in here. It goes through this adjustable power supply here <clears throat> and then it goes into this uh, the breadboard here and then we can turn that on and off with the switch here. And you'll see right now we have 12.18 volts coming out of this power supply. So if I turn this on, a little green light comes on. And when that green light's on, the MOSFET's on. And if we adjust the power supply, hopefully without getting in the way of the camera here. And we get a bit under 10 and a half volts. You see the green LED turns off and the red one turns on. That's when the MOSFET is now switched off and this has gone into uh, protection mode here. And you'll see uh, we're at about 10.4 volts there. I think it'll turn back on around 10, 10 and a half or so. And this has a uh, 30 second delay whenever it detects that the voltage has dropped or has gone too high there's a 30 second delay so it's not sitting there constantly switching on and off really quickly All right, so now you'll see that that green LED has come back on and this also goes through the same thing at the other end of this so if we turn our voltage up a bit too high You'll see our red LED comes back on and the green one is switched off. And the only case where that might actually happen is if uh, the you might start something with this, maybe a car. I, I kind of doubt that it would start a car, but uh, maybe a four-wheeler riding lawnmower or something like that if you want to go start that. And this got connected for too long, it would start charging the batteries and it might go up too high, so that just shuts it off. This obviously doesn't have any balance uh, protection circuitry in it, but uh, it's good enough for this. Uh, I may still have to adjust that cutoff voltage a little bit because it seems like it's uh, shutting off at a little bit too high of a, or a little bit too low of a voltage. I may bump that up just a little bit more. Uh, but anyhow, we'll go ahead and take a look at the schematic for this thing. And I'll be back here. Alright, so here is the schematic for this thing. Uh, just kind of poorly drawn schematic that I can do, but anyhow. Uh, I'll start by explaining a couple things. There are two different grounds and there are two different voltage supplies here. Uh, you'll notice some of these ground symbols have uh, BAT written by them. And that's uh, fairly simple. That means that that ground 
has to be connected straight onto the battery. And these other ground symbols that don't have that written by them are this other uh, ground rail here, which is like our digital ground. So, anyhow, I'll try to explain why I did some of this the way I did. Uh, but anyhow, if we just start here with this uh, grounded battery symbol here, it's kind of bright, isn't it? I have too much light coming in there. Uh, but this is just a simple LM7805 uh, voltage regulator circuit. And you'll notice I have a switch that turns the ground on and off going to this voltage regulator. Now that also switches the ground on and off for all of our circuitry over here. Uh, and then we get the voltage of the battery set up on this pin here. And these caps are just the uh, decoupling caps on there. I mean, the values aren't really all that important. Uh, and we have 5 volts coming out of this. And if you look at the rest of this, we've got the AT1045 slash 85 microcontroller uh, connected to VCC and the ground that we are producing from this. The ground that can be switched on and off here. And this down here is the voltage divider circuitry here. We've got an 18K resistor hooked up to the battery and then a 2K resistor hooked up to ground. And that divides the voltage by 10, so it's, uh, it's something that the microcontroller can read. Uh, anyhow, this was one of the main reasons why I wanted to turn the ground on and off uh, at this point because if I can turn the ground off, I can completely turn this uh, resistor network on and off uh, fairly easily. And let's see. Up here, this is just the LED, the red fault indicator LED. Uh, I've got 220 ohm resistors in these. You might be better off with like 1K resistors just so you're not blinded when you look at it, but I kind of like the really bright LED, so I'm probably going to leave them at uh, 220 ohms there. And then this one is the green LED. And then also off the same pin on the microcontroller that that green LED is hooked up to, we come over here through a 1K resistor into a NPN transistor. And you see that's connected to our ground there. And then that goes over to a PNP transistor and that one's hooked up to our actual battery voltage so we can get the full uh, the lowest on resistance possible out of this uh, MOSFET here. We also have the 10k pull down resistor notice that that one has to be hooked up to the battery ground uh, and the MOSFET here this is also uh, needs to be connected to the battery ground of course uh, and then your load just goes out that way and the uh, the other part of the load will be uh, the positive will just be hooked straight up to it because this switches the ground on and off um, I also have the protection diode uh, stuck across here the uh, 1 in 4007 diode and that's in case a motor gets hooked up to this and the protection circuit shuts off it can't damage the MOSFET from the uh, flyback voltage. And then down here we're just switching that LED strip that I put all the way around the uh, the uh, case on and off with a simple switch. And that basically is how that LED strip is wired with the three LEDs in series and a resistor and that just keeps repeating uh, down there. So anyhow, relatively simple circuit. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and take a look at the code for this, and then I'll actually get this off of a breadboard and onto a uh, piece of proto board or something like that, and we'll put that into the case and wire everything in. And also, I should mention this other load output. I'm going to have a XT60 connector on there for that, so that can be hooked up uh, to whatever 12 volt device. Uh, would possibly need uh, current like that. So, anyhow, we'll go ahead and take a look at the code. Alright, so here's our really quite simple 
code here. Uh, first off, just declaring a couple of uh, integers up here. Uh, so power equals zero, that is the pin that that uh, green LED as well as the MOSFET are hooked up to. Uh, uh, LED, that's on pin one, that would be the fault LED. This is the value for the analog read, and that's the actual voltage. And you set up both of these as uh, outputs, both of our pins. And then we're setting this uh, volt val equal to analog read A2. And then we actually convert that, the uh, 0 to 1024 into a voltage that this thing can recognize. And then we can say uh, if voltage is more than 10.6 and if voltage is less than, I'm actually going to change this probably to 10.9 because it actually is a little bit low. Um, you notice this is not a perfectly calibrated device and those resistors aren't really that high a tolerance. So it's kind of what you expect to have to uh, mess with these values a little bit. Uh, but anyhow, if both of those conditions are met, it will turn the fault LED off and it will turn the actual power on. And if that's not met, it will turn the that red fault LED on and turn the actual power output off. And it will give you a delay of 30 seconds because chances are the voltage will bounce back up as soon as it runs this loop again and it's going to... Uh, or, well, the voltage can go up or down as soon as it runs through this loop, and it's probably going to turn back on. So you don't want to turn it on and off every quarter of a second. Um, anyhow, you run that same code down here. That's for if this condition is not met, and this other one's for if this condition is not met. So, anyhow, last thing, delay of 250 milliseconds, just a quarter of a second. And that just runs over and over, so... Last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to reprogram that microcontroller uh, with this new value in here. And we will uh, go ahead and start building this thing. Alright, so we got one last test of this thing before I actually uh, build it up. So we'll just make sure that our voltage is within reason here. Start off again. I didn't make any adjustments to the uh, lower voltage cutoff. I'll just test it one more time anyway. There we are, about uh, 10.45 volts is what it was before. It looks like it's about the same. Alright, so we'll go ahead and bring the voltage up a bit more. And I didn't see where that actually turned off at. Now, one thing that I should note about this is there's probably more than one way to build a circuit like this. Uh, for example, the way that I'm turning the ground off could probably be could probably be done differently uh, than the way that I did it. But uh, I mean, it works. It seems to work well. It doesn't draw any current when I shut the switch off, which is what I was going for. Um, so anyhow, let's go ahead and turn this up really slowly and see if I can uh, actually see when it shuts off. Something around 12.71 it looked like. Uh, which is probably going to be okay. It's not going to push these up to the point where they're going to explode or something like that. It's a little bit high. But then again, if it is going up that would mean that the batteries are being charged off of this thing and there's going to be uh when that actually shuts off the battery voltage pretty much fall right back down like 12.5 or something like that so there's no real concern here about that um, so anyhow this is the time where we start actually building this thing all right the protection circuit has been built here uh, so it's basically just been put onto a, a piece of perf board now. Uh, so over here we have the LM7805 voltage regulator. Uh, the two resistors for the voltage divider so we can actually uh, get the voltage down to something that the microcontroller can measure. 
Over here we have a couple transistors as well as the resistors for them. Uh, the 10K resistor under here is the uh, pull down for the MOSFET. Over here there's a couple more resistors that are for these two LEDs. And this over here is the actual MOSFET. And everything still seems to work here. Green light's uh, pretty bright there, but yeah. You know. The last thing that I'll end up doing with this is I'll insulate the uh, legs of the MOSFET here as well as any other bare metal. And should also point out I stuck at that uh, diode in over here just to keep it in case this is ever controlling the motor and it shuts off. Uh, don't want it to uh, damage the MOSFET when that happens. Alright, so here it is now with the protection circuit all built into it. I've gotten the connectors glued in. Uh, so basically what we have now is this connector is hooked straight onto the battery and that's what this inverter is going to run off of. So that'll be hooked up something like that. So this is the balance connector for charging it. And then this connector is the one that's run through our control circuitry here. Uh, so I can plug in things that don't have the low voltage cut off on them on uh, this connector. So, anyhow, we have two LEDs here. The green power indicator LED and then the red fault LED. Uh, the red LED can indicate either high or low voltage. Uh, anyhow, if I turn this on, you'll see that that green LED comes on. This other switch turns the LED strips on that are all the way around the side of this. So. And this actually does make a pretty darn good light uh, if it's in a completely dark room. Or even now, it's throwing some light up on the walls. <laughs> so that actually works pretty good. So, anyhow, I should show you just a quick little demonstration here on the, uh, this port. Just to show that that does turn on and off the switch, and if it turns on and off the switch, it'll also turn on and off with the low voltage cutout. So I turn this on, and I cover that up so it doesn't blind the camera. <clears throat> You'll see that this watt meter turns on with that. If I turn it back off, watt meter turns back off. So that works pretty well. All right, guys, that's about it for part four of this video. Uh, I know this is starting to get kind of long, but uh, anyhow, it's just about done. Part five will just be putting the inverter on this as well as uh, I'll probably put labels on all this stuff so you can tell what it does. And I'll give you a shot of the LED lights from the side too. There, so that's pretty bright. And this <laughs> the green light's kind of uh, dazzling too. So. Pretty bright little lights, even with the uh, sunlight coming in the room, you can still tell that they're casting a bit of light out the sides of this. So, anyway, uh, stay tuned for part five, which will be mounting the inverter and putting some labels on some things. And, uh, well, that's it for now, guys. Bye.